We're going to review some differential and common mode or differential and common mode terminology. This is going to be very important when we're dealing with amplifiers, especially op amps, which would be our focus for uh, the near future. Okay, so differential mode, we have uh, two wires coming in. Two wires, you notice how there's also a third reference. We call this the ground node. Uh, I like to call it the reference. Notice how I don't have a magic ground symbol drawn over here. Well, that's because this is not zero volts. Not necessarily zero volts. I don't know. Okay? We have noise uh, that can get coupled into this. Current's flowing in this wire. It has inductance and resistance, uh, so we don't know. So we can't say that this is zero volts is this is zero volts. We only have one location that's tied as zero. If we have two wires coming in, we have a, a nice uh, properties that comes about with this. We can define two terms. Look down on this figure. I have two nodes, two wires, A and B. And of course, talk about node voltages, VA. Okay, VB is just between this node and zero, and that's the normal node voltage you're used to. We can also take the difference between these two, which is notated VD. This would be called the differential mode voltage. It's really easy. It's just VA minus VB. I can even write this down. VD is VA minus VB. We go plus minus this way. We can also change our sign, so we go B minus A. Uh, it just depends on how you do your definition. Watch out for that, uh, for the sign. Common mode is a little different. Common mode, if you look at this, this is a seesaw going up and down. This is just the average of the two voltages. So VCM, lowercase and then uppercase. This is the total signal, lowercase, uppercase. Is VA plus uh, VB over 2. This makes our new set of voltages. Alright, if we have just our node voltages, see here we have our node vol voltages. If I have my node voltages, I can just compute what D and CM are, differential and common mode voltages are. If I want VA, but I have VD and VCM, that's really easy. It's just VCM plus uh, VD over 2. VB, this is just algebra, okay? There's nothing magic about this. Algebra, that is it. Uh, VCM, should be an uppercase M, uh, minus VD over 2. We can use D and A, or CM and B, or CM and A, uh, but we always, we always need 2 to describe these two uh, potentials. We can do it either in node voltage in red or common mode and differential mode in blue. It's a bit of our review of, of that. Alright, next page. This is from lab 4. I'll set that down somewhere. Alright, so that's from lab 4. We're going to tie or short A and B together. Just draw a wire there. And I'll attach the voltage source, and I'll call this V uh, in CM. And there's our zero. There's no nodes in here that are at zero volts. But that's okay. This plus five is with respect to this zero down here. We've done this a few times already. All right. Find the DC value of V out and VB. We know everything that we need. I'm going to use a different color. Let's see if green works out today. This is pretty easy. So we have VN. I know what the emitters are. This is, I'm going to say, uh, 0.65 volts. So pin 3, uh, maybe I'll call this node X for now. I'll say VX is V in minus 0.65 volts. Okay, we're at, like, what is V in? I don't know, I don't care, okay? Um, if I have a number, we started out with zero, because we have a negative power supply here. 
then this is minus 0.65 volts. All right? We're going to stay symbolic because we want the range. All right? Uh, what is V out A, V out B? I do know what this voltage is. I also, therefore, know what I tail is. That is merely Vx minus negative 5, watch out for that, over uh, 4.7k. And that's a number, or we can just say uh, Vx plus 5 over 4.7k. Now this is, remember, this is a difference. It's always a difference, but our voltage is negative. Just be careful of that. Well, now we need to know what this current is and this current is. I'm going to call this I1 and I2. What I don't know, or what I do know, is I know that I1 plus I2 is approximately equal to I tail. Why is it approximate? We're assuming that the base currents go to zero. Remember that. Or beta goes to uh, infinity. All right. Uh, if we can make this KCL, we have KCL assumption here, and we're good, uh, good to go. Well, V out A, V out A is merely five minus the voltage across that resistor. Please do Ohm's law correctly. The voltage across this resistor is uh, I one times 4.7k, or R1. I'll plug those in. 5 minus I1, V uh, in, minus 0 0.65, plus 5, just made a substitution here to here, over 4.7k, or maybe I could say R tail to stay symbolic. I kind of like staying symbolic. Remember, don't forget this. It's uh, R1 times R1. R1, yep. Well, V out B is the same. By symmetry. Minus V in minus 0 0.65 plus 5 times R2 over R tail. Our question is, what is the range of Vn where Q1 and Q2 are in active mode? Okay, this is really forward active mode. It's the only uh, possible mode here. What can we do? Well, I know, need, I know that the collector voltage has got to be greater than or equal to the base voltage for an NP uh, for an NPN transistor. Well, can we do that? Well, what's the base voltage? The base voltage is Vn common mode. What's the collector? That's V out A or V out B. Aren't we done? Range of Vn. So we just have to say B out A or B greater than or equal to 5 minus V in minus 0.65. Remember that's VBE uh, plus 5 times R1 or 2 over R tail. If we have numbers, we can plug that in. Solve VN. This gives us just one end of the range. This gives us the uh, upper end of the range. You'll see that because we have a minus sign, which will flip our inequality. Don't get your algebra wrong. What's the minimum value? If I take these voltages and I move them down, 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 our VBEs, we're going to say they'll, they'll stay about the same. They'll get smaller. 
the voltage across this res this tail resistor will get smaller until it goes to zero. At that point, when the collector voltage goes to zero, you might say that the base emitter voltage still stays at 0.65 volts. Really, it's shrunk logarithmically down to zero. So maybe we'll just say that uh, V in has to be greater than 0.65 volts. Uh, this is a bit of a fuzzy, uh, fuzzy boundary. Here's our two ranges. We need to know numbers for this so that when you're building this you can measure what this is and you can watch on an oscilloscope. I'm going to do part two of this since this is getting long.